Winter in Mongolia. It lasts for seven months each year. Minus 18 isn't cold. It's when it's minus 25 or minus 30 that it begins to feel cold. Mongolia faces huge ecological and economic challenges as it makes the transition from its communist past to a free market economy. It's in a race to protect its ecosystem and the traditional lifestyle while developing into a modern society. Ulaanbaatar is the coldest capital city in the world. But Mongolians moving into the city are likely to live in sprawling, polluted, unplanned slums. The Mongolian government is working with the international development agencies in an attempt to ensure a sustainable transition into the modern world. While the future remains uncertain, the debate is certainly warming up. The Urtu Mukhtar Valley lies to the west of the Mongolian capital. It takes its name from the Mounted Express mail station that the Great Khan set up here in the 13th century. Seven centuries later, the valley still has no road and no electricity, and Mongol herders live a traditional lifestyle, closely dependent on their animals and the land. Dorchmar Tukchin and her family moved here in 1970. At 70 years old, Dorchmar is the matriarch of the family and knows the valley well. This was the most beautiful place. Ours was the only girl. The grass was high and the water was clean. Dorchmar and her family live in a traditional Mongolian gare arguably the most perfectly designed tent ever made. It's insulated with rolled wool, felt, a natural barrier against extreme cold. Mongolians heat their gears by burning wood and dried animal dung. It's not very efficient and has adverse consequences for the soil and water cycles. But when survival is an issue, ecological damage is not necessarily the first thing considered. Out here, you have to work hard and rely on yourself. You can't rely on others or just sit and wait for help. Each person determines how their life will be. Survival has become even more of an issue within the last decade as Mongolian herders like Dochma and her family have lived through increasing incidents of what Mongolians call Tzod. Tzod is a disaster, a climatic event of prolonged extreme cold, which some scientists put down to global climate change. Between 1999 and 2002, Mongolia lost more than 10 million animals, almost a third of its domestic herds, to the Tzod. For the traditional nomadic people of Mongolia, the Tzod threatens their way of life. And it comes at a time when increasing numbers, up to 5% of the population each year, are leaving the land and heading for the cities, particularly the capital, Ulaanbaatar. This demographic shift is fundamentally changing Mongolia. Formerly part of the Soviet bloc, Mongolia has been moving toward a free market economy since 1990. Central Ulaanbaatar is beginning to look like a modern metropolis. But for the rural migrants searching for a better life, home here is most often a gear in the growing chaotic shanty towns of the city. Although no one knows for sure, it's estimated that 60% of the capital's population live in the unplanned gear areas. So many people bringing their nomadic customs to the city is having a major impact on the environment. 
To try to regulate where the former nomads live, the government has enacted a new land privatization law and is trying to provide basic services to everyone. Tsagan Tsar is the Mongolian Lunar New Year. Shatar, following the custom of the season, is ceremonially taking the first steps of the new year for good luck. Like many other Mongolians, Shatar and his family moved from the countryside to one of the expanding Gare areas that have sprung up all around Ulaanbaatar. Living conditions in the countryside are difficult. There is no infrastructure or services. And lately we experienced the zoot and many animals died. The main reason to move to cities are to find jobs and educate and children. Today, half of the Mongolian population lives in Ulaanbaatar city. Officially, there are 800,000 people. Unofficially, more than one million people. 60% of the population live in the Gare areas. That means 600,000 people. 85 to 90,000 households living in the Gare areas with no access to basic services. This is 90,000 stove pipes, 90,000 open toilets. The Gare areas have grown up before urban services like roads, sewers and electricity could be installed. Acquiring something as basic as drinking water can be painful. And there are many disgruntled Gare area residents. During the last election campaign, candidates for parliament visited us. Three years ago, they promised us land, the promotion, and put electricity and build a well. Now it is the third or fourth year of these promises. My kids are in school and they need electricity to do their homework. That's the most important thing for us. We need electricity. We had it, but some people were stealing the electricity, and some didn't pay, so it was cut off. Our living conditions are really bad. When the Soviet era ended, Mongolia lost the financial subsidies that had underpinned its economy. It went through four years of negative growth with high unemployment and high inflation. Today, its free market economy is beginning to grow. The Mongolian government and parliament have prioritized the development of infrastructure. This will play a significant role in sustainable development of the economy. Eradication of poverty, unemployment and development of business activity. The people in the urban Gare areas heat their homes with wood and coal. A lot of time is spent getting and using fuel. Whether in the countryside or in the city, in Mongolia, heat is a matter of survival. And some people go to extremes, breaking the law and even risking their lives by stealing coal. Another risk comes from the unfiltered emissions from tens of thousands of makeshift households hovering in the winter air over Ulaanbaatar. The smoke joins the exhaust from the Soviet-era power stations that generate electricity and supply heat to the city's buildings. 
Together, they form a noxious smog. This little girl has already had three bouts of bronchitis. A recent health ministry survey found that 70% of respondents had symptoms of respiratory disease. With Mongolian cities having the third worst air quality ranking in Asia, the government is now spending 12% of its budget on health issues. Mongolia is attempting to get to grips with its huge environmental and energy problems. Ulaanbaatar's heating plants are notorious. Every year they're turned on on September the 15th and turned off again exactly eight months later on May the 15th, regardless of the temperature. And even the plants themselves admit to efficiency losses of up to 50%. Using an infrared camera, it is possible to see this phenomenon. The colors range from black or blue, which is cold, to red and white, which is hot. When you see red or white, it is all energy being lost. Energy is a big problem for Mongolia because first of all, it's something that's very much needed. You can't do without heat. You uh, have problems doing without electricity. And probably one of the biggest problem is, is that only 30% of the Mongolian households are currently being served with electricity. The other problem is that those power plants that are here are relatively dirty, are of old Russian design and uh, are in desperate need of uh, new investment, better technologies, uh, more environmental friendly uh, services. Many of the city's residents live with the effects of this extremely inefficient energy generation. And while the people living in the Gares dream of the comforts of an apartment, in fact, not all apartments are created equal. The Bat Ulzi family live in what is known as Ice Town. The ice is still there. In winter, it becomes very thick. After you shower it, thaws a bit, but then it freezes again because there's an empty space in the wall. It's frozen. We put more particle board and foam insulation. Before the entire wall was frozen, and that corner and the window was all ice. Of course we have complaints. The residents always complain. Even though the heating is so bad, we still have to pay the full charge. But across town, it's a very different story. Sonit Tsetsek and her roommates are very warm students. Even when it's minus 30 outside, it's like summer in here. Because their radiators are so hot, they have to open the window even during the coldest part of the winter. And they're not the only ones. In this and other neighborhoods, there are many windows open, pumping energy out into the frigid winter air. But the capital does have some fully functional modern apartments. As the story goes, some are too hot, some are too cold, and some are just right. We can reduce heat loss by half if we insulate the buildings, if we fit energy efficient doors and windows, and if we regulate the heating systems. After 1990, when the traditional assistance from the Soviet Union ended, Mongolia became increasingly dependent on foreign donor aid. Nearly two billion dollars poured in between 1991 and 2000, providing a quarter of Mongolia's annual budget, making it the ninth most aid-dependent country in the world. The government has prioritized basic services and health issues in the capital and is encouraging foreign investment. I believe that in the next few years, if the Mongolia develops its infrastructure, it will reach the level of the developed Asian countries. We need foreign and private investment to help us develop. So we are creating investment mechanism. We are working to help investors make profits.
This is critical step for us. One of the most obvious problems is the air pollution from coal burning in the Gare areas. Now there's an aid project to locally manufacture and promote low-cost efficient stoves. Uh, if people save uh, two tons of coal, it means about 50,000 of two Greeks could be saved for the uh, family budget. A second uh, benefit is uh, air pollution, environmental issues, uh, especially in the winter time, in the morning, in at the evening, at the night, there are a lot of smoke. If uh, the coal consumption will decrease, so uh, this uh, effect also could be decreased. But putting an efficient stove in a poorly constructed house is only part of the solution. Another three-year development project is promoting energy-efficient housing. The purpose of our project is to promote the building of super-insulated houses in Mongolia as well as provide technical and financial support. These are some of the materials that we recommend. This straw bell, the made in Mongolia. So far, this is most efficient material for insulation. Also, doesn't harm nature and is the, at least expensive. By using super insulation technology, we can protect nature, reduce pollution, improve people's health and incomes, and the large scale economy. Per capita, greenhouse gas emissions are some of the highest in the world for Mongolians. Our project aims to have some impact on reducing those emissions through supporting super-insulated housing. The results so far from using super-insulation are encouraging. The hope is that through wide acceptance, they can have an effect on energy loss and pollution. The urban planners are also looking at the bigger picture, how to provide services to the Gare communities, as well as better houses, and to integrate the Gare communities with the city as a whole. We have to care for those who live in this kind of area. So how? So that's why we have to make some trial, have to make some pilot project to show to people to government, also to, to people who live in Kiriria, that they have a right for a better environment. The former nomadic people who've moved to the city can be suspicious of the authorities. The project must include the community, so we have to spend a lot of time meeting with them so that they understand what we are trying to do and how this will benefit them. Then together we can achieve our goals. The planners also face another issue. New gear areas are growing so quickly that the government and the agencies working with it find it difficult to keep pace with their development, let alone their statistics. Mongolia's energy executives face enormous challenges in producing and delivering power and heat to the people both in the cities and in the remote countryside. Mongolia is so large that to deliver electricity to widespread communities of just a few hundred is always going to be difficult. And Mongolia faces an even greater challenge. As the Tsod has demonstrated, global climate change has the potential to fundamentally alter Mongolia's grassland ecosystem 
and destroy the traditional lifestyle and rural economy. In Mongolia, over the last 60 years, the air temperature has warmed by 0.4 to 1.5 degrees, and the process is continuing. This certainly will have an impact on Mongolian ecology, economy and social life. In 2002, Mongolia had its smallest grain harvest in its history. During the last three years, Mongolia lost more than 10 million livestock. This is an example of the how global climate change is affecting Mongolian agriculture and animal husbandry. Mongolia needs heat to survive, and new initiatives based on renewable energy have vast potential. With 300 cloudless days a year, the country is well suited to develop solar energy. To mitigate the environmental impact uh, in the whole world or to concern sustainable energy development, that is uh, one of the key uh, policy of the energy sector is to use uh, alternative energy uh, rather than more uh, renewable energy sources. That means we have some larger potential to use uh, solar, water, wind energy. Renewable energies provide an opportunity for private investors in Mongolia's new free market economy and they would help reduce pollution in Mongolia. But the biggest question remains, how would Mongolia pay for it? We are studying the actual reductions of fuel use and thus CO2 emissions. If we find that these emissions are substantially reduced, the Mongolian government can apply to get funding from industrialized countries under the clean development mechanism of the Kyoto Protocol. Individual Mongolians can improve efficiency and experience greater comfort by cutting waste and employing new technology. And Mongolia itself is well placed to act as a laboratory for sustainable development. The seventh millennium development goal. If Mongolia can achieve equitable and energy efficient urban development, it will also show the world what is needed to lower the risk of climate change and protect this unique ecosystem and culture. Dorchma has already invested in a solar panel on her gear, and she's thoughtfully considering the broader issues. There are more families and less wood and I'm worried about the water. The more trees that are cut, the less water we have. I think the water levels and the trees are related. 